All right, when we delve into the concept of the false prophet, you'll soon see that this guy's game plan for taking over the world revolves around giving everyone a sort of ticket to just exist. We often refer to this as the mark of the beast. In a nutshell, this so-called license is all about controlling the global economy and to even grab a meal or make a purchase. You had to be down with worshipping the big bad wolf, also known as the Antichrist or the Beast from the Sea. So, here's where it gets wild. This false prophet gains a stranglehold over the entire planet. How? Well, first, he strikes a deal with Israel. At the start of his career, he tells them, Hey, I've got your back against all those folks in the Middle East who aren't too keen on you. Israel takes that at face value and starts focusing on rebuilding their economy and living in peace. But guess what? In just three and a half years, this guy reneges on that deal. He goes into their temple and wrecks the place. When they first shook hands, he said they could carry on with their worship, but now he's like, nah, no more worship for you. He even goes as far as setting up his own statue in their Holy of Holies, basically saying, bow down and worship me, earthlings. It's mind-boggling. So, you might be wondering, what kind of persecution does this Antichrist bring to the table? Well, it's not just about openly hunting people down. Think about it, if you can't buy or sell, sooner or later, you can't feed yourself. In my view, many folks during this tribulation period might die from hunger. They won't be able to be part of the global economy, and that means no food on the table. This Antichrist character, he's the epitome of cruelty, a puppet of Satan. It's like Satan's own twisted version of the Holy Trinity. You know, God has the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Satan counters with the unholy trinity, he's the father figure, the Antichrist acts like the Son, and the false prophet plays the part of the Holy Spirit. They're like a wicked Avengers team, and their mission? Spreading chaos and evil like the world's never seen before. That's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to what's going down in this whole false prophet and antichrist business. But it's important to stay informed and be aware of what's written about in the good old Bible. So, let's keep this conversation going and explore more about it. So, let's talk about this whole false prophet ideal. Is this guy a theologian or a religious figure? Well, there are plenty of theories, but the truth is, his gig isn't really about religion. The false prophet, interestingly enough, takes on multiple roles. He's not just the religious head honcho, he also becomes the economic czar under the rule of the Antichrist. This dude handles both the spiritual and financial fronts and enforces the infamous Mark of the Beast. It's his job to make everyone bow down to the Antichrist, essentially becoming the head cheerleader for this sinister regime. Those who don't comply don't get the mark. Those who already have it? Well, they're already deep into the Beast's fan club. So, what's the next big thing on the horizon? The moment the Antichrist gains full control, he's got one thing in mind, taking down Israel. He plans to march on them and wipe them off the map. Think of it as something the former president of Iran once talked about, it's now on the Antichrist's to-do list. But things don't go as smoothly as he expects. Suddenly, he starts hearing about other armies coming at him from all directions, north, 
south, and even from across the Euphrates River. So, he hits the pause button to deal with this new threat. Fast forward a bit, and all these armies end up in the same place. What they didn't realize is that they now have a common enemy, Jesus Christ. This leads to what we call the Battle of Armageddon. Trust me, the battlefield in Israel where this goes down is something else. Now, Jesus shows up, and the Antichrist leads the world's armies against him. The Bible tells us that Jesus comes with his holy squad and all the angels. When he breathes, I tell you, it's lights out for all the rebellious folks on earth. It's such a massive takedown that Revelation chapter 19 tells us that God has to summon birds from everywhere to clean up the mess. Yes, that's Armageddon for you, an apocalyptic showdown where Jesus takes the spotlight. So, with the Antichrist out of the picture, and Jesus in charge, what's next? Well, according to the scriptures, all those who rebelled against the Lord meet their end. The only ones left on this planet are believers and followers of Christ. The place gets a good cleanup, and Jesus establishes his kingdom on earth. It's called the millennium, which is a fancy word for a thousand years. With folks like us who got raptured, we'll be helping Jesus run the show, and King David will be his right-hand man. This place will be like Eden 2.0, but even better. But hold on, there's more. Eventually, Jesus transforms into the ultimate judge. We've got various judgments in the Bible, but the one you mentioned, the grand finale, is the Great White Throne Judgment. At this point, there are no believers left, it's a showdown for all the unbelievers throughout history. They stand before the ultimate judge of the universe and must account for their deeds. The books come out, the book of life, the book of their lives, their words, their conscience, you name it. If your name isn't in the book of life, it's the express lane to the lake of fire, where the heat doesn't let up. Now, what about that pesky Satan? Well, at the end of the tribulation, the false prophet and the beast get a one-way ticket to Hades. But Satan, he's still hanging around, bound, but not in the lake of fire just yet. At the end of the millennium, the Bible says he finally joins his buddies in the lake of fire, making them the inaugural residents of hell. And guess what? Anyone who rejected Christ, followed Satan, and took that mark of the beast, they're headed there too. It's not easy to say, but if God didn't do it, he wouldn't be God. He's got to bring justice. And here's the grand finale. The Bible says that the kingdom of our Lord will be handed over to the Father. If you read up on the millennium in the scriptures, it's described as a heavenly place. People live long, have kids at the age of a hundred, no death, no sickness, it's heaven on earth. And that's just a taste of what we'll experience for eternity in heaven. So, God's got a plan, even in the darkest moments, there's always a glimmer of his grace and mercy. And remember, God wants you in heaven. He's done everything he can to make it happen, even sending his own son to pay for your sins. So, when you stand before the Lord, you can confidently say, I'm here because I accepted Jesus as my savior and my substitute. Make that reservation now because after you're gone, it's too late. As it says, it's appointed unto man once to die and after that the judgment. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends so we can keep making them. For more videos like this, 
hit the subscribe button and remember to click on the notification bell. Also, be sure to check out our other videos as well. Thanks for watching.